Hi guys, we're back in my car again, this time to look at an app called Talk. Now, I did a review of this app for Hemadroids um, two or three years ago, and it's one of the most popular videos I've ever done, so I figure I'd better update it. Um, the, the app has changed a little bit in its time, so uh, here's a bit of an update. You're going to need an OBD2 interface, or a Bluetooth uh, OBD2 uh, unit, to uh, talk to the application, no pun intended. This one was £15 on Amazon. Um, I do have another one, but it's bigger than this, and it sticks out when it's plugged in to the port on my car. It sticks into uh, sticks into your shin every now and then. This one, much smaller device. I like this see-through. You can actually see everything that's going on in there. Look. Um, like I said, £15. I'll drop a link just down below. We're going to need to plug this in. In my car, that's just down there. I don't know how visible this is going to be. Can't particularly see what I'm doing myself, but it seems to go in quite easy. There we go. I've come back out of the app because actually the first thing we need to do is pair it up. So uh, Bluetooth is on. We're scanning for it. There it is, OBD2. I'm going to tap on that. It'll ask me for a passcode, which on both of the OB o OBD2 device I've had has been 1234. So we're now paired. You don't necessarily connect. You just need to be paired. Now we're going to go into Talk. And we should see... So you've got a spinny, spinny dials, adapter status. So it's connected to the adapter, that's fine. Connection to ECU is not on at the minute because the engine's not on. Let's just turn the car itself on. And I think that should change. I don't know if we have to come out or refresh. Turn my aircon down. Adapter status, there we go. Now it's connected to the ECU. Tick. So, what are we looking at in here? Um, there are a variety of plugins, currently installed plugins, sorry, look, get more plugins down here. And it takes you to Talk's own website where there's lots of different plugins listed. Um, Kia, look, for example, in my car. Monitor specific Kia parameters in real time, but it's a paid plugin that somebody else has made. There we go, sorry, not Google Play. And they want three or four pounds off me, I think, for it. So I haven't there, three ninety nine. So I've not I've not bothered with that. The talk app itself is a paid app. Well there's a free version with ads, I believe. I mean I've owned it for years. I think it was three pounds. I was looking on the Play Store to see if I could see how much the thing was these days. Uh, and it wasn't so easy to see. What have we got here? Graphing. So uh, you can log your sort of rev counter and stuff like that on a graph. Map view. So you can... Come on. So I've got a couple of logs already. Um, I literally just went up and down the road here. Um, I came to and from work there. Uh, the red... I think is faster because obviously the turns are when it's green. You can export that data um, and then you can import that into Google Earth. I did that yesterday. It doesn't give me a huge amount of uh, huge amount to look at apart from just that to be honest. Where it really comes into so is these two here I believe. So fault codes. Tap here to scan for faults. This may take some time. So, it's going to read through my ECU, I believe, looking for any sort of faults that have happened. No false code stored in the ECU, so it spent all that time scanning and then there's not actually... Uh, you can save them, look. Uh, load fault log, clear faults on ECU, that could be handy if you're having some intermittent issues and you want to get rid of them. Uh, and then the other big one... Uh, the real-time information so this is kind of like a launcher in itself really you, you can use it like you would any other home screen um, you can add dials or graphs or anything you want there's so many secondary air status fuel and air status I don't even see what that one would be no data not supported fair enough how do we get rid of that one let's see 
Uh, delete display. Look, there we go. It's gone. Add display. So, I mean, yeah, there's there's lots. Roll meter, pitch meter. Just simple clock. GPS positioning. Emissions monitor since DTC. What we'll do actually, we'll start the car up. Just so we can see anything that might be. Uh... I like that you can you can move them to pretty much anywhere. So move display. You know, it's almost pixel by pixel, and they can overlap. Um, it's not a matter of like a like a normal launcher, a uh, desktop launcher sort of thing, where it's a grid and you've got to fit it into a grid. It's not quite like that. Um, so you'll see. So I give it some revs, a rev counter. Now I can kind of cheat with the accelerometer because it works left to right as well as up and down. So if I shake the phone, I think I pulled like four four G at one point there. Eh? Well, definitely it was two. Back in. Um, I quite like this, but I've never, I've never really had a chance to test it. So while we're stationary, everything's running. It says, "Obviously, it's ready." And in theory, boom, we set off, and it, it will, it will time me to 60 miles an hour. Um, it also do your quarter mile, eight mile, and, and all that sort of thing. Um, and it will show you also your horsepower as you're going. So what I'll do, I'll show you a bit of, uh, of it in action as I'm driving around. So there we have it, that's talk. Um, is it worth it, is it useful? I guess it depends, you know, if you're a bit of a petrol head, I think it's a, it's a neat little app with the, uh, with the OBD2 device. Um, you can do it all for less than 20 quid. Um, I think it would be handy if you have a car perhaps that's often showing like uh, engine faults and stuff like that, you can see what the faults are in advance. So it's kind of good. If, I've owned the app, I bought the app literally two or three years ago I'll be honest, I've hardly ever used it. Um, but then I've not really had any car problems, I've never had fault codes to check. Um, I don't really do drag racing, um, so the 0 to 60 time and stuff like that, I'm that much use. I've got a rev counter on my dashboard, so that's not much use. Um, it, it is just kind of, a, I think, a bit of a geeky but fun app. Um, so, I don't know, let me know your thoughts, I suppose. Like I said, I'll put a link down below for where you can buy the Bluetooth OBD2 adapter. Um, let me know how you get on. My name's Andy, I'll catch you all again soon.